One dragon down and four more to go. The closer you've listened, the more you already know. This month on D and D minus. As soon as the aspect of the green dragon falls at your feet, the world around you melts away. For just a moment, you find yourselves in a black and infinite void. And then, as your vision comes back, you find yourself in a shop or maybe a museum. Whatever it is, you've never seen so much stuff. And you've been to Gary's a few times. <laughs> Lining the walls, stuffing the shelves, hanging from the ceiling are countless objects. I mean, there are swords and shields, but there are also things like bits of string, food items, stuffed animals, all around you, apparently without rhyme or reason or order. And in the center of this room sits a desk. And at that desk sits a red dragon. Not huge, like you would expect, but almost minuscule. Snedrick, you suspect he's not much taller than you are. And as you approach, he looks over a pair of spectacles and says, uh, what are you all doing here? He's a nerd. We appeared here after the world melted away. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, 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 let me explain. I, I am the aspect of the red dragon. I, I, I suppose you all managed to take down the aspect of the green dragon, which is uh, why you're here, yes? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so hold on a second. You asked what we were doing here, then we asked what you were doing here, and then you answered with what we were doing here. <laughs> this is some roundabout shit, man. Why don't you just tell us what you're doing here? That's a good point. He had totally tricked me. I was like, on to the next thing. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, let's, let's see. Um, hmm, what am I doing here? Uh, you, in order to reach Tiamat, uh, she likes to play this little game, or, or we like to play this little game. It's it's complicated, but you have to defeat each of her aspects, and each of her aspects represent a different kind of dragon. Um, let's see, the green is manipulation, black is evil, blue is honor, white is the beast, and, well, you'll, you'll find out what I am in just a moment. <laughs> a hoarder? Uh, close. B b bonus points for the, the one in the back. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I, I would just... Love to know, because no one's defeated the green aspect in, in a few years. Did, did you kill the puppies with the flag? We did kill the puppies with the flag. I eventually. don't really I, remember. I tried, to play, I tried to play with them, and they attacked me, and like something exploded. I got poisoned right before that, so I don't really remember, but we did kill those, yes. I, he was kind of a big lummock through the entire thing. No, I, I understand. If, if it makes you feel any better, no one ever just straight up attacks the puppies, and... Uh, most people get taken out by the cookie elves, so so don't 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 be hard on yourselves. I told you guys that was normal. <laughs> I'm not hard on myself. I forgot all about all that shit and had to get reminded of it at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> oh no, well, um, we're going to fight, and I'm gonna try to kill you. You, you try to kill me. Don't, don't worry, you can't actually kill me. I'm just an aspect of dragonness, and, and then at the end of it, whoever wins gets to um, will either reorganize their shop, in my case, or, or uh, I suppose move on to the next aspect of the uh, dr dr dragon. Good, because these objects have no rhyme or reason. <laughs> okay, so the fact that we killed the green aspect, is Tiamat like 80% like there and 20% faded like back to the future? Like, how does it work? Ooh, I, what an excellent question. And he holds his draconic hand up and a book, uh, a flying book that you almost recognize sort of slaps into his hand and he opens up this giant tome that's got a sort of image of Tiamat on the cover and he says, yeah, yeah, see, it appears that each aspect you defeat weakens Tiamat substantially. Uh, she is a god after all, so I suppose but by defeating all five of us, you'll put her into a, a state that will allow you to um, at least render her mortal or um, paralyzed. Or, um, it's not quite clear here. Why are you telling us all this? Yeah, it's weird. Oh, you know, not 
all the elements of Tiamat are bad. Uh, I mean, some of them are the green green fellows, uh, quite a dick, and the the the, the uh, black dragon, problematic as that may be, is um, <laughs> probably the worst of us. Evil, yeah, is the evil Wolf. aspect. Yeah, no, you, t- talk to Gary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys could just switch around the colors, right? <laughs> you'd think, right? You'd think you could just switch it around, but you'd be amazed at how much fucking mechanics are really tied to those sure. fucking colors. Real yeah, hard to systemic. No, I get do it. that as wish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's about it's 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 culture. What is it the Southerners say? God damn it! It's not hate. Yeah, it's heritage, 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 not hate. hate. Yeah, it's yeah. heritage, not. It's okay. They they're gonna change it in D and D one or something. I don't fucking know. Anyway, so any uh, other questions, or shall we get to the uh, the fisticuffs? Do you really want to fight? It seems like you don't really want to fight. Yeah, I I'd prefer not to fight, but uh, um. I'm afraid the alternative is that you stay with me here in my collection forever, and I find most adventurers don't want to do that. Can't we just, like, negotiate? What if we, like, slide a piece of paper across to you, <laughs> and then you read it? Okay. Oh, my God. Hey, we, we okay. got to get through the, the thing anyway. Might as well finish chatting up. So, so what's, what is this collection of yours? Oh, I am I am glad you asked. You see, as I mentioned, the green fella is manipulation, the black one's evil, blue is honor, white is the beast. But I, I am, am what I humbly prefer to think of as the core of the dragon. I am greed. So you're saying we're going to succumb to our own greed based on what we see here, like this loose string that you have on the wall. I'm going to like become greedy and... To my own detriment. No, 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 no. That, no, that would be far too metaphorical. Although I will say there, there was a thousand years where I, I, I tried a bit where I, I created everyone's favorite food, but then it, it never got any smaller and they just kept getting hungrier and hungrier. And then like it, people ate like seven bites and they were like, is this what you're doing? Is that the bit? And I was like, yeah, no, that's the bit. And it was just, it was just sort of awkward. And then I just like stabbed them. Anyways, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Did you do any food at all? Hey, while we're on the subject, what's your weakness if if you had one I, while we're chatting? I, I don't think I have one, but uh, you'll you'll have. Are to... you a bit of a perfectionist? Maybe is, yeah. is that what it is? I, I work too. Hard, I try too hard, and I care too much. <laughs> you're yeah. you're too greedy. I code in C plus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no hierarchies. No higher languages. D and D plus. Uh, no, no. Uh, in fact, what I plan to do to all of you is is a lot more interesting. I promise. I'm I'm going to defeat you with every weapon and every trick and every cool little object you've ever seen. Uh Dave, you're gonna be so like you're you're gonna survive. Should this I just one? like stab my eyes out right now so I'm blinded <laughs> and I can't like be easily manipulated? It feels bad. As you start to say that, Bridget, he draws in a breath. A deep breath, a cosmically, insanely, cartoonishly, impossibly deep breath. And as he does, almost unbidden, you all start to remember your adventures. Swords and clubs, the crossbows held by the guards where you freed Floon Poff, the armor worn by the guards of Arakok. I'm going to remember more marshmallows, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Even Holly Crinkle's hammer. But that's not all. You also remember every item you've gotten from Gary and every item you refused. Magical, wondrous, impossible objects flit through your minds at high speed. And when your vision clears, the red dragon before you is no longer sitting at a desk. He is wearing all of it. Somehow, impossibly neatly in every pocket across his waist. or Like Joey wearing all of Chandler's clothing? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Or strapped across his back is every magical item, every weapon, everything you have seen in your adventures. And he says, Could I be carrying any more of your weapons? (laughs) (laughs) And pulling out what can only be Dave's grandpa's legendary thunderbuss from his back, he says, Let's see what these babies can do. Everybody, roll initiative. Probably best if I roll badly here. Oh, that's great. 21. 22. 17. Okay, nice. Seven. That's good. I don't go early. But I have advantage. Do I roll twice? Yeah. 28 was the second one. Nice. It auto-filled it in. Oh, wait. Sorry. I'm, 
And my, I just, I just rolled the twenty. I didn't, I, I forgot I had a plus four on initiative, so that's twenty-one. Twenty-one. I'll fill it in for you. No surprise here, Talon. You are up first. Okay. You can shoot some arrows. Does he have all of our current equipment too, or no? I mean, he has Dave's Thunderbus, so. That's true. Yep. Yep. The dumb question. How big is the room then? Imagine sort of an infinite museum or library going around at all sides. Okay. Like bookshelves and stacks of shelves. And he is, I would say, 20 feet in front of you. He was at a desk, but now he's just sort of standing 20 feet in front of you. And the size of the place we're in is infinite? Yeah. It sort of stretches out infinitely on all sides. It's that, it's that librarian avatar. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Okay. How tall are the shelves? Infinity. Let's see. I'm going to say 25 feet tall. That's not very oh, tall. Okay. Infinitely long. Yeah, they're infinitely long. They're not infinitely tall. Got it. No, I figured they'd be at least like 50 feet tall, though. So I'm going to... Do I have my ring of invisibility on from when we were fighting the green dragon? You do, yeah. Okay, so like, not, we haven't changed from like the previous battle, right? Nothing's changed? Nope. Okay, so I'm invisible. Yeah. Okay, I am going to... 20 feet in front of us. I'm going to acrobatically jump over him. Okay, you're going to jump. Yeah. You fly, man. Can I say one of my favorite themes of D&D Minus, the podcast, is when you guys want to use a skill, you'll be like, I dexterously push this heavy <laughs> rock. <laughs> like, I'm going to be like, well, they did say dexterously. Our <laughs> adverb game is strong. <laughs> I medicinally jump. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and... Just do it recreationally. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to try and perch like behind him on a bookshelf. Perfect. But I wa I'm thinking that like that entire movement might be my action, right? Um, No, you can get behind him on a bookshelf without using up your whole action. Okay. You, move, you use your move action that way, but... Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to, so with the oath bow, with the sworn enemy thing, I did the sworn enemy on the green dragon. Yeah, he's dead. So you, you. I have it back. Yeah, you've got it back. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the sworn enemy thing on the red dragon. And I'm going to fire down at him with the oath bow. And if I connect, it'll be a sneak attack. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I get two, right? Yeah, you get advantage because you're behind him. Okay. Two plus 11, 13. So that's probably not going to hit. Near. With the advantage. Oh, come on. Oh, no, seven. I thought it was a one. Seven plus 11, 18. That's probably not going to hit, right? Nope, does not hit. Okay. So then with my bonus action. So before you take that bonus action, your arrow goes whizzing by his ear and he goes, oh, started already, have we? I got these from the back of a comic book. And he pulls from inside his lapel a pair of X-ray specs created by patron Mike Davies. Thank you, Mike. And plops them over his head and then turns back and looks at you and goes, hello, Talon. Big fan of your work. Cool. Wow. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of fun with this, I can tell. Um... <laughs> Blame the patrons. They're the ones who love yep. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do, I'm trying to think of like a dodge bonus action, but that's a reaction, not a bonus action. So I guess with my bonus action, I'm going to do sudden strike and try and, oh, but if the attack doesn't connect, I'm assuming I can't make an additional attack, right? Correct. Okay. Then I'm going to stay where I am, perched. Ready to dodge if he attacks me. <laughs> holding perfectly still, <laughs> hoping it's based on movement. It's, uh, it's not based on movement, guy, the magic. You know what? It's fine. You're up there. Good for you. I'm going to try a couple of books, see if like a secret compartment opens or something like that. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Claw just thrown around. <laughs> all right. Wow. He's really, he really does his own thing. No, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I am. I'm going to start. I'm going to just like start pulling books down. And that's the, the end of my action. Okay. It's all pretty right. funny if Claw just spins into another room and he's like, I'm, I'm out of the fight now. I'm out of the fight. <laughs> I'm in, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit. I'm in a dungeon, guys. I'm in a dungeon. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, four fifths powerful fucking Tiamat's down here, guys. Oh, beans. All right. Brent, you are up next. Okay, Brent, I like that. Okay. Brent, Brent, I said Brent. All right, I am going to, um, I'm going to whack him with my sword. Fuck him. 
Yeah. So I'm going to just run at him and hit him <laughs> right on the head. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Roll that uh, attack for me. That's a 26 to hit. That feels good. 26. You bring your sword crashing. I mean, it looks like you're going to cut this tiny, again, he's not taller than Snedrick, this tiny dragon in half. And yet, just as you're about to hit him, you feel your blade stop. And you look down, and underneath the blade is a line. No, a shield made of baguettes. Mm. And he turns to you and says, can't let you do that. I'm afraid I'm on a roll. And he's going to use his reaction to fire bread out of the advanced bread (laughs) (laughs) room. What? (laughs) Using his reaction. Yes, this is the advanced bread rope, which was turned down, I believe, in episode seven. As a reaction, you fire seven rock hard day old baguettes at your attacker. (laughs) Bridget, make a dexterity saving throw for me. I will do that one second. Oh, fuck. That's a 13. Yeah, that's not going to do it. You will take. God damn. 19 damage. 19 baguette damage. 19 baguette. I fucking hate everything to do with your bread roll. (laughs) I blame you for this, Dave. And you're pushed back 20 feet. So you're just like (laughs) right back into line with your uh, fellows again. Cool. Well, just so you guys know, while I'm holding this drawn sword, it creates an aura in a 10 foot radius around me. So people on either side of me and. You have advantage on saving throws against spells or other magical effects while I'm holding it. Nice. It's sure a good thing I'm standing right next to you. <laughs> a dragon god could have done something so much better and instead fired bread at you. I feel like it's good that I didn't take that. I know, but I think he's just taunting me because he knows how much I hate your fucking bread roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he is doing that. Oh, wait, because I have a um, paladin level higher than 17. The radius is 30 feet, so it might get claw. I don't know. Hmm. Nice. If you're 30 feet away from me. I'm probably 31 feet away. Oh, thanks. Cool. <laughs> don't, don't take the help. <laughs> Listen, chaotic neutral. <laughs> All right. So, Bridget, you get bombarded back to your spot. And uh, he actually reaches up to the front of his sort of chest plate and says, I've been wanting to try this one out for years. Uh, you know, the old schoolyard rhyme, I'm rubber. And he pulls down. And reveals that his chest plate is sort of shiny and white. And this would be the Armor of Glue by Eric Alsman. Thank you, Eric. Huh. Snedrick, you are up next. All right. How close am I to this little guy? 20 feet away. Okay. And how far can I move in my move action? 25 feet. So, yeah, you can get right up in there. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to use my Primal Savagery cantrip. Mm. (gasps) Oh. You channel primal magic to cause your teeth or fingernails to sharpen. Definitely go in teeth. Ready to deliver a corrosive attack. Make a melee spell attack against one creature within five feet. Obviously, I'm going to do him on a hit. The target takes, it'll be at my level, 4d10 damage. After you make the attack, your teeth and fingernails return to normal. Oh, it's, sorry. No, it's teeth or fingernails. Yeah, so I just feel like that the image of like me biting the fuck out of a tiny little... Snedrick sized dragon <laughs> would look good. In, I love uh, it. All right. So I'm going to do that. And I have to make a melee spell attack. In the animated series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. 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 Which is apparently a, a 17. So there was probably nothing to that at all. I probably just missed with my teeth, which probably looks great. 17? Yeah. Yeah. Does not hit. He uh, sort of dodges back out of the way and says, Wow, Kitty has claws. Yuck, I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. I, it's ridiculous. sort of a last minute. It was my minute. teeth. I used my teeth anyway. You used your teeth and sense. I was just, I got sort of caught up in and the shit. moment. Was, I was yeah. excited to use them. No, it happens to me too. I get it. I get it. I'll come up with a, go- a better chomp. You late. I'll come up with a good one for you. Yeah, later. All right, I all feel right. sh- I'll, I I'll feel try shitty. the same thing. It's a cantrip. It's a cantrip. I'll co- it'll come back around. You'll mm-hmm. chomp around for something better? Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, silence. I'll just I'll just see myself out. Maybe maybe you will too. <laughs> he uh reaches behind his back and he says, "You guys are going to get a kick out of this one. Trust me. It's a little bit meta, but I know you're going to enjoy it." Here's a little gift you ignored from the metamorph and he pulls out a big book 
And you can see the front of it. It says Book of Misspells created by patron Ali F. Thank you, Ali. Uh, Dave, I believe this is uh, one of your favorites. And with that, he points a clawed finger at Dave and Bridget, who are standing next to each other, and a small clergyman, perhaps a monk, in sackcloth robes with a circular bald plate no larger than a fingernail shoots out of his fingertip and hovers in the air between Bridget and Dave. And then the red dragon whispers, Friar Ball. <laughs> Bridget and Dave, make a dexterity saving throw for me. We get advantage on this because it's a magic. Yep, do it. Nice. Okay. That's a 14. That's not going to do it. Or? My 14 is no good. No. At uh, that's a 20. Uh, not natural. An unnatural 20. 20 will save. And 18. 18. Ah, damn it. It does save. All right. Face. Do you take half damage or zero damage? Zero. Uh, well, that's just we take zero damage. <laughs> no, because uh, Dave's got an ability that he takes zero. I don't know if you have an ability that you take zero. I, I, I do definitely know what's the ability called. So <laughs> I know for... Just I'm I'm just so you know because I am testing you. What's the ability called? <laughs> Thirty nine damage. So you're going to take twenty damage, Bridget, as this ball of tiny monks explodes from the center of you and Dave, and you are both pushed to either side twenty feet. That was the friar ball. That was the friar ball from the book of misspells. He he should have slapped you with his nuts, though, right? No, okay. So I just thought because because <laughs> ball, it would be good to get ball in there too. Oh, I okay, balls. Okay, I, I was like clergy abuse is where we're, we're doing we're doing a clergy but because it's friars. It's just it was just there wasn't a ball. But yeah, that's it's yeah, fine. I got it's it. Fine. Dave, you were up. All right, y'all thinking I do a protection thing or a shoot at him thing. Ooh, I mean, I'm right here. Like I'm right next to him because I just tried to bite him. So I feel like protection thing might be better. I can avoid hitting you with, I have like a thing. I have a sculpting thing where I can like. Oh, okay. All Ooh. right. Well, in that case, shoot the fuck stuff out and him. not hurt you. None of us have hit him yet, right? Yeah. He's going to be tough to hit. Now he's going to be, he's got so much extra shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we got to test like what works by just like firing at him. He's buffed all to. Yeah. He could have been but naked and unarmed, and I would have still missed him. But yeah, you guys are going to have trouble hitting him regardless, but yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to start with a finger of death. Ooh. Love it. I think you've done this spell before, so you don't need to read the uh, description. And I just uh, roll the thing. Actually, it's a constitution saving throw. So... He's going to try and hit a 21. That is a 26. There's no way he saved that. What? Indeed he did. 17 plus 9. He's taking half, he still takes half damage. He actually does not because he is a legendary. What? Yep. There's something that specifically says that like the thing in my spell doesn't count. Oh, actually, it, it is actually even lamer than that. He has a thing called legendary resistance where if he had failed, he could just choose to succeed instead. Jesus. What? This sucks. <laughs> but that doesn't explain why he wouldn't take half damage on a successful saving. I agree. No, that's another one of his actions. Okay. I was just saying he has an even lamer thing than that. We could like, he's a nerd, so we could just like, you know, roast him. I mean, honestly, <laughs> if we had been roasting him, we would have been doing just as well so far, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Dave, bonus actions. Yeah, I'm going to throw a fireball necklace piece. Okay. How many of those have you thrown? One. Two. One. <laughs> I feel like it's been two. Uh, no, I, I thought about giving one to the dog to throw. Oh, that's right. There was one to Carl. So you didn't actually throw the Carl one. I was going to give one to Sea Dog, but then I was like, here, to use the Thunder Bus. And we did that instead. Yes, that was cool. I do remember that. It was hard to edit, but it was very funny. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, great. Throw that fireball. He'll make a dexterity saving throw, right? Let me check. Necklace of fireballs. There it is. Ooh, he rolled a one. So he's <gasps> going to critically Critical. fail. Nice. Ooh. I will say even on the failure, even with the legendary resistance, he's going to take the full damage of that fireball. So maybe he's uh, 
mocking you or preparing. He's he actually he gets so excited. You shoot the the finger of death. He sort of ducks out of the way and he goes, oh, actually, if you like finger stuff, I've got something to show. You. He's so distracted that he misses the fireball. Uh, so roll that damage for me. <laughs> Boom. 30. 30 points of damage. Yeah. So they, he doesn't notice this tiny bead of flame just hits him in the chest. He goes, oh, big explosion. He gets blown backwards 20 feet. All right. So he's like underneath me now, right? Yeah. Almost exactly. Yeah. All right. Speaking of which, Talon, you are up. And I'm, I'm going to add something to this. I'm going to say that he is prone right now as well. When he gets blown yeah. backwards, he doesn't land on his feet. Ooh. He's like lying on his back directly below you. Cool. I'm going to like jump down, sit on his face and fire an arrow into his stomach. Nice. Interesting. All right. Sit on his face. Yeah. yeah. He had to make it sexual somehow. It's aggressive. That like bird screw penis is going to come in handy. Okay. You have, you have, action. Are we, is that official? <laughs> Talon has a duck penis that's like a corkscrew? It is now. I cannot tell you how many times we have arbitrated. So many times. What kind of penis Aarakocras have. What did we land on? It is the overwhelming theme of this is not a Dungeons and Dragons podcast. <laughs> it's a what kind of penis does Claw slash other Aarakocra have podcast where we occasionally play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to relitigate this with you. Claw, is it a corkscrew? <laughs> it's a corkscrew. It's me. I decide. That's 25? <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. Cool. So wait, when you sit on his face, do you slowly turn around in a circle <laughs> as you go down? <laughs> and your wings come up really slowly and then... You <laughs> Shudder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to do... Can it still be a sneak attack if I'm sitting on his face? <laughs> I don't think it can be. Well, I, I, I question this entire system now. I, I would say that if someone jumps down on top of your face right now, no illusions, you would consider yourself sneak attack. <laughs> well, I mean, afterwards, I wouldn't. The next attack, I wouldn't. I would feel like at that point, if I'm not prepared, it's, that's on me. Ooh. <laughs> This all counts. as This is all the sneak attacker in here. Yeah. Next, <laughs> next time, he's definitely not getting sneak attack. And I'll explain why in a moment. Should I roll the damage? Uh, yeah, roll that damage. 26. 26 damage. Excellent. And I'm going to fire another one. Do it. With advantage. 7 plus 11, 18. That's a no. No. Come on. 10 plus 11, 21. No, I'm afraid not. And and Kla, I will tell you why. Okay. Because I don't know how closely you were paying attention, but one of the gadgets that he tried to show you earlier that he was very excited about was the Eric's Armor of Glue by Eric's Allsman. So as you land on the Red Dragon, you find your ass <laughs> magically fuses <laughs> to his chest. And while your first strike, it's true... <laughs> He manages to struggle to his feet, and the fact that you are now horizontally and magically stuck to the red dragon makes that second hit uh, hard to do. Now, I want to be super clear, because this is important. Mm -hmm. Is my, my ass stuck to his face? No, your ass is stuck to his chest. But I didn't do that. I sat on his face. Yeah, but in the general oeuvre of things, you, you uh, said it's just... Okay. There's no way he's going to back... That's too good of an idea to back away from. There's yeah. no fucking way you're going <laughs> to talk him out of that. I was hoping I could get him to, like, not be able to say spells because my ass was in his face. Oh, but... <laughs> all right, all right. No, that would be pretty oh. cool. That'd be no. pretty cool. Or, like, he'd have disadvantage because he'd have to, like, look around you or something. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Or, like, speak through me or something. Yeah, Yeah. right, right. <laughs> So he, he bounces up to his feet after that miss and says, well, talk about tarred and feathered. Am I right? Well, first he blows the feathers out of his mouth. <laughs> <he says> that. <laughs> <laughs> Quick claw fart. <laughs> oh There's got to be something I can do while attached to him. I'm going to find it. <laughs> you can start stealing shit from him. This oh. might oh. be the time. Yeah. Get in there. Oh, that, that'll distract the greed dragon. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Claw, I'm going to say your turn is over. Yeah. Now, am I, <laughs> when he starts doing actions, since I'm like on top of him, am I able in any way to like react to everything he's doing? No, you're magically stuck to him and he's super strong. So you're not going to get like attacks of opportunity every time he moves. Okay. Brent, you are up. Me? Yes. 
okay, should I just banish him to a different plane of existence? I mean, Claus stuck to him ass first. I don't know. Can you do one and not the other? Uh, probably. I don't know. Magic is magic. I feel like, you know, probably is not, you know, yeah. like, see, like it, the the end result of not is Claw being banished fair, to another dimension. Fair, also, fair. the dragon has like a superpower of like, no. Yeah. And like, whatever you do doesn't happen. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay. I am going to cast, it seems like anything I attack him with will stick to him at this point. So maybe don't do that. I could have him drop something. Could you have him drop claw? <laughs> do you want that? I don't know. I kind of want to like <laughs> see how this goes. I, I th I'm sorry. I thought you were into it. So I didn't want to do that to you. I didn't want to intrude. If you know what I mean. Save it. Let's, let's try it like in one more turn, maybe. <laughs> sure. Sure. Seriously? Claw's just getting like flipped around all over the place with his, his <laughs> stuck to this dragon's yep. face. And he's like, let's see where this goes. <laughs> I've got him just where I want him. All right. I'm going to do Aura of Vitality. All right. Um, I cast it on myself. Healing energy radiates from you in an aura with a 30-foot radius. Until the spell ends, the aura moves with you, centered on you. You can use a bonus action to cause one creature in the aura, including you, to regain 2d6 hit points. So, how's everybody feeling? I'm down about 20. I like this general idea. Yeah, I'm going to cast that just in case at the third level. Wait, can you do the keg thing? The, I feel like the keg thing was... No, not. that was Bridget. I'm yeah, Brent. that's Bridget. Yeah. You don't have all the Bridget? Okay. No. no. He does, but I don't. Yeah. yeah, he probably could do a keg. No, he can't do it. Well, he doesn't have my spiritual weapon because that's not a fucking item. He only has items. Anyway, so I'm going to do that. And yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. All right. Are weapons not items? I mean, he has the armor and stuff, right? Weapons are items, but it's a spiritual weapon. I create it in the shape I want. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, bonus actions. Nah, I'm good. Excellent. Snedrick. You're not going to use a uh, bonus action to cure yourself? Oh, do you need do you need curing? Well, I, I, I thought you did. I, I'm at like 89 of 143 hit points, so I'm not like doing great, but. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll cure myself. That sounds great, actually. Let, let, I'll do that. 2d6. Here we go. Nice. I get eight. All right. Snedrick, you are up. All right. I'm going to try to bite him in the dick again because, like, you know, I don't want to <laughs> use a. I don't want to use a spell slot and just have him not on me or whatever. So it's important for me to know if he has a dick for my next turn. So this is good. <laughs> oh, does he have a dick? It's only one way to find out. I feel like that's not the only way to find out, Eli. I feel like <laughs> you've been lied to. <laughs> and I feel and I feel like I'm telling you this way too late. Podcast is over. Podcast is over. Everyone go home. <laughs> I'm calling the police. Okay. If his dick is like a cork, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Can I do a nature check on whether dragons have dicks? Well, not on not on someone else's turn. You can't. Can you Google it? I got a 31. Absolutely. Yeah. I am going to bite him for... I'm like eye to eye with you right now. <laughs> 15 savagery damage or whatever the hell. It, wait, what is the type of damage? Corrosive damage? 15. It didn't turn out to be all that much. You have a corrosive bite. I have a corrosive dick bite. Yeah. Nice. My, da my damage roll is shit. It's 4d10 and I only got 15, but. All right. Bonus actions. Anything else? No, but he did promise uh, a snappy line, a bite related or chomp related. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Time to pay up. So, so I could really sink my teeth into. Oh, no, time. you dug. God damn it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, damn it. On the fly. Oh. Think of another one. <laughs> uh, teeth. Got it. One second. Give it to me. Al dente. <laughs> Molar. Stop <laughs> teething me. Teeth. Eye teeth. Chomp. <laughs> to, yeah, you know what? Uh, that just gave me something to chew on. Not bad. Okay. Yeah. I had yeah. to do yeah. I had a big thing and he used it. <laughs> you realize you were going to just step all over my shit. You want to do like a B, C, and D? Like suck his knee today? <laughs> Hey 
everybody just jumping in real quick to thank you for listening to the show. We love making it and we are glad that you enjoy listening to it. Real quick, if you're hearing this, means you're not a patron and you've got to ask yourself right now, why? You get behind the scenes Dungeon Master's Corners. You get the short game we played, Lasers and Feelings, the worst and the dimmest. And you're helping pay our bills and helping make the show happen. We're just a few patrons away from two of these bad boys a month. And we can't wait to make them for you. So check that out over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus, all spelled out. Or can't afford to support the show, we understand. Why not give us one of those five star reviews? Wherever you listen to your podcast, really does help promote the show, puts it in front of new people, keeps us on the charts so that people find us out when they're just looking for podcasts. And we are so, so grateful for those of you who've already done that. All right, I won't waste your time. Let's get back to the show. All right, so the dragon looks around and he goes, you know, I could tell you guys aren't uh, taking this particularly seriously, so let's say we up the stakes. And he pulls out the Book of Misspells again and casts Meteor Shower, Blazing Orbs of Meat. That's like my literal best spell. (laughs) Plummet to the ground at four different points you can see within range. Each creature in a 40-foot radius sphere centered on each point you choose must make a dexterity saving throw. The sphere spreads around corners. A creature takes 20 D6 fire damage and 20 D6 bludgeoning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Okay, remember you have uh, advantage. advantage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we all have advantage. So can you like double up on advantage? Because like I have advantage just naturally from a cloak I'm wearing or whatever. No, you just get normal advantage. Unless you're jumping off of a turnbuckle onto... (laughs) A beach <laughs> slutsky. We don't do double advantage. What are we rolling right now? A dexterity saving. Nat 20. Oh, nice. I got 17. 24. Do I need to roll since I'm stuck to him? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What would you do dexterously? Just do a normal roll. What? So without advantage, because you'd have disadvantage because you're glued to him. But wouldn't he also have to take the damage that I take? Yeah, he's immune to fire damage. Oh. oh. This is a red dragon. But not bludgeoning damage. Not bludgeoning damage. Okay, 17 plus 11, 28. I'm, I'm also immune to fire damage, by the way. Oh, you're also immune to fire damage? Yeah, I'm a dragon. Nope. No, red dragons are immune. It depends on the, the kind of dragon. No, I actually seriously have that. Fire damage is my damage resistance. Yep. Brass dragon. Oh, because you're brass dragon. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then this meat comes hurtling down. Sorry, let me look at the log. See who saved. Okay. Yeah, Talon, you save. Yeah, 28. Dave, you're immune, so that doesn't matter. Base. Snedrick saves. Brant, you do not save. 17. Yeah, you do not save. And Talon, you say, all right, so Brant, you are going to take... 40 damage. I did the math. It's okay. No, it's 20 D6 Times two. So I'm going to roll these 20 what? D6. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's two rounds of 20 D6. Yes, two rounds. 40 D6 One might call damage. it 40 D6. Yep. <laughs> Brand, oh my God, my screen is full of dice. I'm nothing but dice on this side. <laughs> I should have turned off auto dice rolling. Brant, you are going to take 143 <laughs> points. Well. What? I'm not dead. <laughs> from this meteor storm. That's okay. It's fine. All right. Dave, you are up. Okay, question, and this actually affects the past, sort of. Sea uh, Dog was there when we finished our last battle. Is he still yes, here? Yes, he's still here. How come he didn't get a turn already? Because you haven't commanded him to do anything. Boo, boo. Cop out, cop out. Ah. Lie, you forgot. <laughs> do your job, do your job. <laughs> you, you're, you're God. Do your job. I stood here, master. I stood here the whole time waiting for you to tell me what to do. Why didn't you? Why wouldn't you just speak up and say like it's probably my turn now? I even have him in the fucking order, Heath. I've watched him and I've passed over his turn each time because I'm spiteful. I'm a spiteful maiden. I don't think that's how it would like the universe. I'm not fine. How the universe works? No, it's not how there would be because it's turn based. So like just the the time would stop. I know. I skipped his turn. I skipped it. I skipped it. Mm, Uh. Sea Dog. Yes. You there? Yeah. Okay. So from now on, here's your first command. 
Just always speak, speak up, up when it's your fucking turn. <laughs> Wonderful. As long as you remember that I'm here, Master. No, I'm, I'm saying I don't need to you. remember. You just say it. <laughs> but it's almost as though I don't exist when you're not around to tell me what no, to do. No, but it's it's almost like that, but it's not. Especially now that I've told you, just speak up. Perhaps if there were a stronger will than yours that negated my existence what, when how you about did this? not direct. How about this? Just like every 15 seconds, you say something. <laughs> All right. You got it. <laughs> Forever. You got it? Sure. Yep. 100%. Okay. Great. Also, no way for that to go wrong. Great job, Heath. <laughs> yeah. I'd like you to do your fire breath and hit the dragon. He's fire immune. Do ice breath and hit the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Bananas in pajamas. That was 15 seconds. <laughs> nice. See? And now I know you're here. Thank you. So his fire breath, Noah's right. The, the dragon would be immune to it, but he does have like a beam. Let me. Yeah, shoot the beams. Yep. But like between my legs, hit him in the face. Oh, no, that's fire damage too. Never mind. God damn it. Bite the dragon. Bite the dragon? Yeah. Nice. It, his dick seems to be a weak spot. <laughs> yeah. Is it though? For the record, nah, I've never said my dick is a weak spot. I don't, I don't appreciate you spreading the rumor that it is. Okay. All right? <laughs> is it, a, is it a, a weak spot? I know you Everyone, say that. I mean, okay. Time, time out. Time out, time out. Time You're out. A time out. Time out. You twist your ankle. What? What are we doing? Can we all just agree? Everyone's dick is a weak spot. <laughs> I was okay. gonna say. <laughs> Thank you. Have you ever met a dick that wasn't a weak spot? <laughs> Thank you. That guy gets it. Our duck penis is a weak spot. Dicks are dicks, man. I feel like that's a strong spot. Well then. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've seen a lot of anime that doesn't like adhere to that rule, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a weapon. Yeah, exactly. I've seen it. I've seen dicks take down buildings. Super problematic. I don't have a counter argument. I just want to point out that I have also seen a lot of anime. <laughs> just in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, can I say I've got strong opinions? Honestly, <laughs> I believe him. Are you like a tentacle guy? No, that's hentai. Seen a lot of that too. Bible Black, am I right? Huh? <laughs> What's your favorite anime? Favorite anime? Uh, I got turned full into metal, a skeleton. Full metal. Full metal. Say full metal. No, I got turned into a skeleton. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this dog's oh, going to bite you. Yeah, no, the dog's going to bite me. Okay. Come on in, dog. All right. Dog's <laughs> going to bite him. Yeah. Take a big old chomp for 20 damage. Can we get the three heads going one dick, one each on a ball? No, unfortunately, he can only do. Oh, no. Yeah. He could. Uh, yes. Yes. Cerebus makes as many bite attacks as it has heads. Which is three. And one claw attack. Yes. All right. Let me do that again. Hit. Oh, he, so he can claw the taint at the same time. Exactly. So hit. Fuck yes. Provide the reach around. As a miss. I feel like Red Dragon might like this, but let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. So that is going to be 41 damage. Sea Dog, nice work over there. Thank you, master. It's been way more than 15 seconds and you didn't say anything. Oh, I just want to be clear. Oh, oh, oh. No, I did. I, I said something. It was just bad radio. <laughs> if okay. I did every 15 <laughs> seconds. I considered starting a 15 second timer on my side of the mic, but Morgan, <laughs> Morgan's doing the rough editing. I'd like him not to quit and murder me. All right. Dave, bonus actions. Anything? Another fireball from the necklace. It's fucking fire. But it worked last time. Did it work? Oh, yeah. It wasn't supposed to work. But it did. I'm not going to undo the damage. I'm not nope. going to undo the damage because no, that's dick. Heath, it's not going to work this time. But it's not going to work this time because I remembered. Unbelievable. Much like Cerebus, I remembered. I don't think it's right to say that you remembered in, in this instance, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> it was remembered. <laughs> and that's an unfortunate uh, coincidence. All right. I'm going to misty step like... A little bit away. Ooh, read that spell description. I don't think you've misty stepped yet. Yeah, it's a bonus action I can do. Misty step. Briefly surrounded by a silvery mist, you teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Nice. I'm thinking maybe I should I go should I go behind him or further back? Behind him, because I'm like stuck to his chest. So like we surround him a little bit. Mm hmm But then we're also in each other's like crosshairs in some sense. I feel like stuck to his chest is gonna be in our crosshairs one way or the other. So we're all going to have to kind of avoid those type of uh, like cone type or beam type spells anyway, right? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go backwards because I have a lot of long range stuff. Nice. So you go 30 feet back. And Dave, as you reappear, he goes, oh, okay, uh, well, um, I'll miss you. 
And then he uh, says, I, I feel like oh, I could use like a little misty, like you'll misty me. Yeah, thank like you. Misty thank step. you. I feel like I could use a little protection here. And he reaches again inside a pocket and pulls out a small buzzing yellow bag. These are spelling bees by Mediocre Mr. Micah. Thank you, Mediocre Mr. Micah. He tosses the bag into the air and a swarm of bees flies out from him and surrounds him. And then with a flick of his finger, he casts the shield spell on each of the bees, which now swirl around him in a cone of magical shields. Does it also include me? Yeah, you're inside the thing. Wait, so the bees are like a nanobot shield? Yes. Okay. Claw, you were up next. Okay. Fart. <laughs> <laughs> so my, I've been thinking like two things. I can try and... <laughs> I'm stuck to this guy's face. I'm of two <laughs> minds. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm on board. I could either sleight of hand maybe the spell book to one of you. Like I could like steal it and toss it to one of you guys. Mm, Ooh, nice. I love that. Excellent. Love that idea. Or I could try and do like some sort of like critical penetrating stab and take him down like in one <laughs> shot. I like, the, I like the idea of using the word penetrating a lot. You know? <laughs> yeah. Generally. I mean, that second thing doesn't exist and that first thing sounds super dope, but whatever you want to do, don't let me influence you. <laughs> I would like to do a super duper punch. You know that one from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So my thought was I would do a nature check and see if I could like remember like, you know, weak spots on a dragon. They don't have weak spots. They're fucking dragons. Okay, cool. I'll give you that for free. They all have one weak spot. I won't do that then. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to try and sleight of hand steal the book. Fuck yeah. The, it's the misspells book, right? Mm -hmm. I will tell you what, this is going to be a 20. That's going to be your DC for this. My sleight of hand is plus 22. Yeah. So, so you already did it. So you Shit. already did it. <laughs> I, I thought I was making this hard. It has to be so, 31. <laughs> I was going to say 30. So fuck my ass. Um, yeah. <laughs> you steal his book of misspells. Who do you throw it to? Snedrick. Because he's closest, right? He's like literally below me. You can throw it to anyone you want. I'm not going to limit you on that. <laughs> what if you attach it to a snorkel and a spear and then throw it? <laughs> what if I attach it to my screw penis and I just whip it round and round and round? <laughs> <laughs> is Snedrick within the B shield as well? Snedrick is within the B shield, yes. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to give it to Snedrick. <laughs> nice. All right, Snedrick, here's how I'm going to let you use this item. All right? Uh-huh. You can cast as a bonus action for free any spell that you can misspell from your spell list. Wow. All right. All right. You can just make up whatever the fuck you want when it's your turn. And that'll be a free bonus action. Wait, so I mean, I can, I mean, I can, I can misspell anything. He would have to successfully misspell it, or else <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, sorry, that's just any combination of letters. Sure is. You got to do like a one or two letter change, like, like, but, <laughs> but make a real word out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Otherwise, you'd just be like, I don't know, man. I misspell Misty Step for <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And does it have to be a spell that Snedrick has or can it be any spell? Any spell that he has. I don't want it to be. So we can't do wish. Okay. But then it would have to be like fish. Great. <laughs> All right. So can I see like, are, so we're, are, we're still underground, right? You actually have no idea where you are. We're just in like a library. Is there like a sky above me? Not a sky above you, but it has struck you that you were in a forest earlier and now you're in a store. So it's not clear where you are. There's probably some illusion magic going on. I gotcha. Can we like roll for perceptions and stuff? Yes, but you, yeah, I was going to say, you don't have to do that until your turn, Snedrick. So yeah, you can, yeah. you... I'm going to do a bonus action though first. Yeah, hit it up. Because I think that was just like, you know, the single action. I'm going to, okay. Can I disengage? <laughs> Absolutely. That's going to be a strength check of 16. Oh, good. That's a five. Well, that's a five. Did not that do it. That will not do it. So I kind of push on his thighs a little bit and, <laughs> and nothing just happens. Go, come right back to him. <laughs> <laughs> you okay up there? You, you doing all right? I'm down. You're up. All right. Oh, down. <laughs> you, you, in front. You okay front there? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of try and shove my corkscrew penis into his face. <laughs> 
and see if it hey, bothers him or not. Hey, stop it. Stop, stop. Cool. Just like the whole fight pauses, this epic battle of magic <laughs> pauses for like a quick slap fight. Stop, stop, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, Brett, you're up. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I am going to use my aura of vitality to heal myself because fuck all y'all. <laughs> I, I need it. I'm going to do that. There we go. That didn't do much. I just got five damage. And then I'm going to instead use the spell command and I'm going to say drop. Nice. Interesting. The target drops whatever it is holding and then it ends its turn. Oh, that's so much stuff. All right. What is the saving throw on that? That is an 18 saving throw. All right. He succeeds. Oh, fuck. Fuck off. Don't make me drop my stuff. That's my whole thing. Yeah. And I'm just a, a guy. But I, I, I assumed it was going to be whatever you were holding in your hands. So, like, at least we no, wouldn't have I'm to deal with I'm holding, fucking... like, infinite imaginary stuff. Well, wasted spell slot. Go for it. Snedrick, you were up, sir. All right, so if you don't need wounds cured, I guess I am going to. I I have I have been left no choice but to turn into a fucking uh, turn into a fucking Aegilosaurus. Oh Fuck. yeah, <laughs> yes. We're not in a small room, so this works. <laughs> this is going to be so good. You're going to destroy all of his shit. Red dragon, are you a dinosaur about that? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> all right, so this is actually not very particularly good it's um he's gonna get jurassic to his stomach <laughs> Cret- cretaceous but yeah that's fine that's fine <laughs> god that's that's fucking loyalty to the nerd code is that you hear a pun that good actually, and you're I like no idea i don't i do, do want to be there with you i do but i can't unfortunately <laughs> I cannot Crete, shut up all right so i'm i'm gonna melee attack with my um with my big ass tail thing and uh, let's see it's 4d6 plus 4 of bludgeoning damage it must succeed on a dc 14 strength saving throw or be knocked prone yeah so your giant tail comes sweeping around roll that uh, attack for me all right that's for whatever reason not like you can't just yeah it's click not clickable so just roll yeah, a d20 right, and we'll right. add seven to it eight i don't know what i was rolling for there eight plus seven okay so that will not hit. You don't do the damage, but he did fail the strength saving throw. So you grow into this tremendous dinosaur and just like flop, flop a tail down on him. He is <laughs> pinned to the ground underneath you. So as an ankylosaurus, I, I, like, I feel like it might be hard as an ankylosaurus to like turn the pages of the book. Like, can I still do like... <laughs> you know, can I still use the, the spells? Oh, absolutely. And shit? Okay, all right. Yeah. Magical. Angular. So, do I get to have a little wizard hat on, even though I am a Angulosaurus? <laughs> now, there's, there's one okay. very important. No, wait. There's one very important question. Were you wearing a little wizard hat before? Well, no, you know what? I wasn't wearing a little wizard hat. I was wearing a cape, though. That fucking Angulosaurus is wearing a cape. Okay, fair, that's that's all um, I need. One hundred percent. If he's reading a book and wearing a cape, I'm a happy man. I was also wearing a, <laughs> this is this is a bit of retcon, but I was also wearing a monocle uh, yes. this whole time. Oh, definitely. So. Definitely. <laughs> All right. So wait, where are my, because oh, I had a good one. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go with an, I'm going to cast eyes shard. Ooh. Right? Not ice shard, but, or eyes, eyes knife. Ooh. So I'm going to create a shard of, of eye, I guess, you know, just a big, <laughs> <laughs> ocular shard and I'm going to fling it at a creature within range make a range spell attack against the target on a hit the target takes 1d10 plus what is it it's 1d6 per level of cold damage so it would be 1d10 of piercing damage and 10d6 of cold damage on a failed save nice roll that at attack first with advantage because you have him held down and he's prone all right. So I am also prone, right? Yeah. I was saying 26. <laughs> it hits. All right. All right, all right Roll all right, that right. damage. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so again, this is not clickable for whatever reason. It's just got the 1d10 as the thing. But the so I'll have to roll the five, the whatever it is, 10d6 separately. Yeah. So there's there's 1d10. That's five damage. And that's 42. Oh, 42 damage. 42 damage. Excellent. Yeah, this 
these pieces of eyeball come like splattering all over. Ah, 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 yuck. I didn't think I was going to be taking a, in the words of the, the weekend, all eyes on me. Am I right? <laughs> 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 huh? All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. So I'm like madly like moving my arms and legs around to avoid <laughs> yeah, all this. You, you somehow <laughs> escape. <laughs> I mean, like, you would think that the little eyes would know to avoid him. They could see him coming. <laughs> Obviously. The aspect of the red dragon is next, and he sort of is struggling. He's got a dinosaur tail on top of him, and then claw underneath that. He's sort of struggling with all of you, and he, he sort of hikes gently, it started, it hikes up his sleeve, and you see he's got a little tattoo there of Gary, but instead of made of mud, it's, it's a Gary made of fire. And he says, ah, how do you guys like my new tattoo? And he touches it and his body is bathed in flames. And everyone who is currently touching him make a dexterity saving throw for me. Where is the tattoo? On his forearm. On his forearm. So he's touching it with his other arm? Now, this yeah. is a this is a spell, so we have uh, advantage on this, correct? Yes, you have a spell. But also, how could he touch his other arm with his other arm if I am on top of him? Well, imagine that someone was sitting on your chest right now mm -hmm. and reach one arm over Oof. and touch your other arm. Yeah, I think I'm big enough that he wouldn't be able to do that. I you can absolutely do that. You could touch your arms. <laughs> I'm a huge fucking bird. You're not a huge fucking yeah, bird. Yeah, but it's, it's mostly feathers. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going through. You've never You're seen him like... wet. He's really actually much thinner. Than... <laughs> All right, so I, I rolled an 11 and 12. I don't think that the advantage is going to help me much. <laughs> what was it? Uh, what say was it? Dexterity. Okay. 19 mm -hmm. and 24. Okay. The 19 will save. And I have your 24 then? I, hopefully. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Yeah. So, Snedrick, you are going to take 21 points of fire damage. Okay. All right, Dave, you are up. Okay, just quick question. Pajama banana. Th thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sea Dog. You're you're up next. Just remind me when that happens. You can stop doing the 15 second thing. You pretty much haven't been doing A it. A dark force is making me not remind you, Master. I know <laughs> yeah, not where it's from. It. Just do your turns. So scale one to ten. Yeah. This I would say somewhat sensual interaction between Talon and the red dragon. Sure. Mm -hmm. With one being like, red dragon's mildly into it sexually, and 10, he's like all the way into it sexually. What, where, where are we? <laughs> Zeus, this is a one. This is a one. He's mildly into oh, it. No, I'm a two. one is one. It's a I one. Said, I just defined what one is. Oh, well, then he's a negative two. What? I'm a two. I'm kind of, I'm like, eh, I can be better. He is not at all sexually turned on <laughs> by being <laughs> attached to a bird that he had just lit on fire. <laughs> or tried to light on fire. <laughs> okay. Okay. Another question, one to ten. Approximately. No, wait, 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 wait. Before you try to move on, Heath, then write, why? It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just answer the it question. Actually, no, it matters to me. It matters to me. You can't make me be on a podcast. I'll quit. I'll quit our show. It matters to me, too. I'm interested. Yeah, in it matters to the audience. No, I was hoping your answer would, like, be in the consensual range, but apparently it wasn't, so that's fine. <laughs> why? <laughs> What were you going to make me do? No, I was not going to make you do. I would never. I would never. You can make me do stuff. It's fine. Uh, this came out weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My follow-up question is, one to ten, how sexually interested would Red Dragon be in a very sexually attractive bear thing? Oh, you're talking about the bear thing? <laughs> The coquettish bear. So those bears are not meant for seduction. That's what the internet has done to them. <laughs> Listen, it is canon that there's an extremely sexually attractive <laughs> fuck bear in yep. the room right now. Who there hasn't is been a fuck bear in the room. Yep. <laughs> hasn't been taking their turns. I believe it's a non-binary <laughs> pronoun identifying fuck bear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so fuck bear, um, really quick, since, since you haven't done anything in a while, can you go ahead and get a little seduction going with that red dragon right there? Absolutely. I will have the fuck bear <laughs> make a persuasion roll on the dragon. And people just 
People just walked by in my hallway and they were like, this guy's talking about a sexual scenario with a fuck bear. I heard him say that. <laughs> okay. So it's a plus two charisma. And I'm going to roll this openly because I, I know you guys, you're going to be like, oh, Eli faked the roll. So I'm going to roll this in front of everyone. We can never see the rolls anyways, so it doesn't matter. To everyone. And we're going to add two to this. That's a one. Yeah. He is not at all attracted <laughs> to that. <laughs> Okay. Did we did we all collectively decide that it was called fuck bear? Yeah, I forget what it was, but we fuck squatch. I forget what we Googled it. It was a Yugaloth. Oh right. Yugaloth, okay. thank you. Yugaloth. Yeah. Yeah. It it's it's it like is a, yeah, it is a fuck bear. It's like it's a uh, bear. imagine like a tardigrade, but like full size, but also like Jessica Rabbit, like half and half. The bear tries yeah. to do a sexy <laughs> dance and slips on the the like wooden floor. <laughs> And, fall, and have you ever seen someone fall like hard and everyone does like a, oh, uh, that's that. Uh, yeah. Hit the that's belly. how the bear yeah. falls. Hard. Okay. <laughs> oh, poor bear. Hey, yeah. Fuck bear. That didn't work at all. Just to, Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Believe me. We saw. We saw. Yeah. So just uh, attack the dragon, please. No, you used its fucking action to try to do a seducing thing. Fuck no. It's it, it. That was its last turn. That was its action. Nope. That was its turn. If you want me to role play a fuck bear trying to seduce an aspect of the red dragon, that is I'm, exactly what I want. I'm with you all day, every day. But when that fuck bear fails, you have to own it. <laughs> that was a critical fuck bear fail. Okay. I feel like we just said something and they activated a Winter Soldier by accident. <laughs> like, I, feel, I feel like a member of our audience is gonna kill Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> <laughs> Some spy master in Russia is like, now that is very unfortunate series of words, right? <laughs> like, can I just say that's not on me? That is not on me. <laughs> I need you to own it when the fuck bear fails its seduction. <laughs> All right, fuck bear's turn is over. Okay. Sea dog next, right? Yep. Uh, sea dog, yeah. Go ahead and attack the dragon. One question, Master. Sure. He appears to be on fire, and giving him a chomp might hurt me. Should I still do it? How much do you think it's going to hurt you? Uh, 2d10 fire damage. Oh, yeah. You're, you're good. You have, like, so much life. I actually checked I do on have this. Like like, mathematically, your life is so much more than that. So go ahead. Okay. I just want to make sure it'd be, be, be like when, when you bite hot pizza, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, hot. no, absolutely. Like, like tomorrow, you're going to be like, oh, my God, the, my top of my roof of my yeah, mouth. Go. I'm going to yeah. do this thing. <laughs> yeah. Where you blow, but in the yeah. micro oval. He's looking at us as we have this conversation. <laughs> I am looking at you. It's true. Yeah. You guys watch Roroni Kenshin? Go ahead Amazing and show. Why <laughs> saying that? <laughs> that is going to be. Oh, much better. That is, that is 52 points of damage. Jeez. Jesus. Nice. Yeah. Sea Dog, Sea Dog, you want some jerky really quick? Oh, no, 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 not right now. I got the burned tongue. You have the burn right on the top. Now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. Totally. <laughs> like chicken butt pie. Yeah, no. Do you have any milk? Okay, is it my turn now? Yeah. I would like to cast Feeble Mind. Feeble Mind? Yeah, this is an enchantment. I will be blasting the mind of a creature that I can see within range. My range is 150 feet. I'm in that for sure. I'm going to attempt to shatter its intellect and personality. Target takes 4d6 psychic damage and must make an intelligence saving throw. Before I actually do this, uh, does he is the, like does he have like magic like no it doesn't count thing from before? He does, but he's actually used all three of his legendary resistances already. Fucking do it. All right. What does he need to hit? He's got to do an intelligence 21 saving throw. That is going to be a <laughs> That's a seven. Yes. <laughs> okay. On a failed save, the creature's intelligence and charisma become one. The creature cannot cast spells, activate magic items, yeah. cannot understand language, or communicate in any intelligible way. Fuck yeah. The creature can, however, identify its friends. There aren't any. Follow them and even protect them. Doesn't matter. At the end of every 30 days, also doesn't matter. Yeah. So he's like stupid and fucked. So, Dave, this spell goes flying out. And this dragon, he's got, like, the little spectacles, and he's all covered in the thing. And you see him writhe in pain. Claw, you go flying off his body. And Snedrick, you get fl flown off as well. You're both now, like, 10 feet back from him. And he sort of 
claws around the thing and you see his body like morphing and twisting and horribly rearranging itself. And then as the smoke clears, a dragon stands before you, but not like the dragon you saw before. This one is wearing a tiny tank top over massive pectoral muscles and a baseball cap <laughs> that says oh, no. Hodel Bitcoin. And he says, <laughs> yo, that was super gay, bro. Like totally <laughs> gay. Really problematic. What? Wow. Also, uh, he takes 15 damage psychically. Sure. Bonus actions. Bonus action. I'm going to try a fireball on this whatever thing. Uh, he's still immune to fire damage. It is one of the only things that is still good about him. Ah, damn it. All right. I don't think I can do anything else. I'm done. All right. Dave, as you finish, he looks down and he has these rings on his fingers. These were the uh, rings of finger guns by <laughs> BJ Hypes. Thank you, BJ. Um, and he goes, oh, rings? Gay. And takes them off and throws them to the floor and doesn't use them. I hate <laughs> this guy now. <laughs> I kind of liked him before. I don't like this. Oh, uh, you hate me? Yeah. Well, that's because you ain't me. Wow. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna holy Avenger Longsword bitch slap this fucker. He yeah. starts listening to an Andrew Tate podcast. Like while oh my you're God. preparing, he just pulls out. <laughs> we should tell him about an initial coin offering and just confuse the fuck out of him. Thirty three to hit. 30, okay, you're, first of all, it's not your turn. <laughs> it is. I'm right after Dave. Talon, oh, no, right. I'm, I'm after Dave. Oh, you're right. Talon, you are now free. You were blasted away with the force of sheer douchebaggery. <laughs> is the chest plate still stuck to my chest? Uh, it's stuck to your ass, yeah. Stuck to my ass? Stuck to your ass. Because you, you sat on his chest plate. <laughs> Sat on his chest. I sat on his face, and then I was stuck to him. We chest had this chest, argument right? already. No, no, you were, I was you were butt to chest. We had this argument already. Your Anyways. ass was to the chest, just right next to his face, so you could get the corkscrew in the face area. Yeah, I mean, agree to disagree. High chest. Uh, you're high. You're high on the chest. So, feels kind of mean to like shoot him with an arrow. No, feels it mean. Did you yeah. hear what he just said about fucking He's, hodl Bitcoin? He's like so pathetic now. He's listening to a Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> a bunch Andrew of Tate. slur words already in the last like five seconds. Claw, he's listening without headphones. He's just got oh. it on. It's oh. 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 He's the worst. <laughs> he's wandering around trying to find a fat person to make a mean TikTok about, but he doesn't know where he is. So he's just generally wandering. How long does that spell last, Dave? <laughs> Forever. He's gone now. I hope it's forever. <laughs> um, okay, how far away am I now? I, I got blasted 20 feet away. Yeah, 20 feet. I'm going to fly up and I'm going to try and shoot through the Bitcoin logo into his head. <laughs> sure. 17 plus 11, 28. That'll hit. Now, I was reading the sneak attack thing while we were gone. It says it's an additional 10d6. Yeah. On top of the attack. So should I roll the attack damage first and then the sneak attack? Yes. Okay. So then the oath bow is 1d8 plus 5 and 3d6. Sure. So I'm going to roll the d8. So it's 6 plus 9 plus... Oh, there's a dice stuck on top of another dice and it is freaking out. 33. 33. All right. So 48. 48. Excellent. He is looking rough and not just because of what you did to him culturally. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing then one more time. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not as good. Uh, 17, but I, you said I get advantage on the attack rolls, right? Yeah, go ahead to take advantage. 19, so a 30. Yeah, that'll hit. So that'll be 11 mm -hmm. plus 12 plus 39. Is that 52? 52, yeah. So that was 100 damage total. That's 62. Yeah. So you pull back your bow, and instead of trying to dodge or do anything, he actually goes, huh, see, that's the funny thing is most people don't realize that if you stay on a natural diet of organic fruits and vegetables, 
outside things can't harm. And then an arrow just <laughs> folks right into his hand. <laughs> wow, you shot me with an arrow, bro? Gay. <laughs> Oh. Gay. Is he dead? No. Damn it. Oh God. Good. Good. All right, Bridget, you're up. Uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bitch slap him with my fucking sword. That's 37 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> and he's undead, <laughs> right? Because he's a shade. <laughs> um We is, talked about this so much in the last undead. one. Yeah, he is you yes, get undead he's damage. Fucking, okay, cool. All right, it's this plus two D ten. One second. So that's 17 plus. Roll. That's 17 plus 9. 17 plus 9 is 26. Oh my gosh, he is barely, barely hanging on. You slash this sword across him and he goes, wow, super clear that you didn't have the ability to debate me. <laughs> <laughs> that you had to resort to that. <laughs> Snedrick, I will tell you, this dragon... Oh, you've destroyed this very likable dragon character I've created. <laughs> he has 19 hit points left in the world. All right. So I. God damn it. Only hit him for 18 so we can torture him for a little bit. You're an Ankylosaurus. Well, that's the thing is that I want to hit him with 18 so I can use my bonus action because I have a good misspelling. Nice. All right. So since my last turn, I have discovered a whole new tab on my uh, on my character <laughs> sheet. <laughs> I have some awesome shit. So I'm going to turn into a fucking storm giant because apparently that's something I could have done at any point. Yes. <laughs> and I am going to lightning strike this bastard. Fuck. Yeah. I hurl a magical lightning bolt at a point I can see within 500 feet. Each creature within 10 feet of that point must make a DC 17 Dexterity saving throw. That shouldn't be a problem because he threw everybody uh, when he turned into an asshole. Mm -hmm. Taking 12 D8 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. All right. He's got to get a 17. Nope. That's a 12. <laughs> All right. So wait, I'm sorry. It's damn it. I don't want to do that much damage because I want to hit him with my, uh, with my earth. All ones. All um, ones. So sorry. What, what, uh, what is it? It's uh you could use your portent to like lower it if it's too high. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. He rolled 18. I see it. Yeah, right. Perfect. Um, 50. 50. <laughs> 18. Okay, but like angle it away. Like, you know, you're, you're peeing on him, but then you move it. Right. And and quick before I, but quick before he has a chance to die, I'm going to use a bonus <laughs> action to cast Earthquack. <laughs> and a giant <laughs> celestial duck is going to appear above us and quack at him so loud that it shakes the earth below him. Amazing. And to death. So I can't, I couldn't pass up one. Absolutely. The, the, oh. the, you know what happens is you, you hit him with this lightning bolt, you cast earthquake and a duck just bursts out from the ground, <laughs> snaps him in the beak and then just lowers back into the depth. <laughs> and he says, this is why people were forced to vote against the Democrats. <laughs> I've never voted anything but third party. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of the aspect of the Red Dragon. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.